Hello and welcome to the Luke Lunchtime Takeaway. We're going through the Gospel of Luke, looking at the life and claims of Jesus as he goes on his journey towards his cross and the great achievement uh, at the end of Luke's Gospel. Life has been very busy recently. It seems like lockdown ending just means that we've gone back into a rush of everything, doesn't it? During lockdown, we had lots of time to think and to ponder uh, but now life is, is very, very sort of back to normal and, and it can be easy, can't it, just to get sort of sucked into that rush. Have you had time to think about some of the big picture questions of life, about what life is about and why we're here? You see, the problem is we rarely deal with those issues in our normal way of life. Uh, we just rush on through all the pressures of life. When we're teenagers, it's exams and career choices and so on, and, and all the angst that goes with being a teenager and the identity issues and so on. Um, then when we're young adults, well, we just want to have fun. We want to live for now. Uh, and then maybe we're, we're saving to pay the rent and, and try to get a deposit for a mortgage. Uh, you're settling down. Maybe you've got a family. And, and if you've got a family, then life is a 24-7 job, isn't it? And it's only sort of when you get to your mid-40s that you start to breathe and start to think about life in a bigger way. But maybe when the kids are gone, that's when you want to get on with your career. And you say, well, I'll think about what life means when I get to retirement. And then retirement is a bit like being a recycled teenager, just want to have fun again. And, and we put off those worries for when we're old, except we probably are by that stage. And, and so we have rushed through life without really thinking about what it's all about. Now, some people can add religion to that uh, as though it's kind of like a whole extra layer of busyness. Let's get involved in the local church. Um, we'll go to church on Sunday. We'll help out with the children's rota or the music or, or, or the high tech or what have, it, what have you. Um, maybe we'll run the brownies or, or the food bank or something. And people think by all that kind of activity that they can please God and somehow God will accept them. Actually, that's as futile as ignoring God completely. The danger with all of that activity is that we get focused on who we are and we never actually know Jesus Christ as our Lord. Now, in his gospel, Luke tells a story at the end of chapter 10 where Jesus goes to the village of Bethany, to the home of Mary and Martha. And we know from John's gospel that this is a place he loved to go to. Uh, later on in John's gospel, in chapter 11, uh, Jesus will raise Mary and Martha's brother Lazarus from the dead. Uh, and so it's obviously a home that meant a great deal to him. They were his close friends. And this is maybe early on in the relationship. Uh, and Luke tells us in verse 38, Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. Mary sits at the feet of Jesus and she's delighted by him. She cannot get enough of him. She hangs on every word. She wants to know everything about Jesus that there is to be known. And you can see that the message of Jesus is really changing her life. But after a while, Martha, who's working in the kitchen behind her, is, is annoyed and bothered. And she sort of intervenes in this conversation and she says, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. You know, really, why can't she help get this meal ready? And when the meal's ready, we can all sit down and, and we can listen to what you have to say. Now, it seems an obvious thing to say, doesn't it? And loads of busy people will say the same. Let me get this done and then I can think. But Jesus very gently deals with her and gives her a very gracious reply. Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Jesus says one thing is necessary in being a Christian. What is it? Is it lots of religious activity? Is it lots of doing? though they may be good things to be doing. Is it our devotion and service? 
No. The one thing that is necessary to being a Christian is Jesus himself. We can be busy doing, but never know Jesus. That's why Mary has given Jesus her undivided attention. Think of the things that Jesus does for us or presents to us, brings to us. Jesus, first of all, is our revelation. He reveals God's glory to us. He reveals to us that God is holy and God is our creator. And God has spoken and made his character known throughout history. And then finally, he has spoken through his son, Jesus. Jesus is our redeemer. We are sinners. We need a saviour. We need someone to take the price of our sin and pay it for us. And Jesus has come to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many by his death to take our sin upon himself and pay the price that we cannot pay. Jesus is also our righteousness. You know, all the people that we put our trust in as heroes in this life all fail us. I've talked about that before in these videos, that we always end up disappointed, don't we? Except with Jesus. Jesus is the perfect human being. And the Bible makes clear that when we trust in him, we place our sin on him at the cross. And in return, his righteousness is reckoned as ours. His perfect holy life is reckoned to our account. Jesus is our redeemer. He's our righteousness. He's also our example. He shows us how to live. Uh, he shows us a radically different life to the selfish values of the world around us. And he calls us to be remade in his image and his likeness, to live like him, to live a Christ-like life. Jesus also gives us victory over death. He has broken the power of death by his resurrection. And the same power that raised him from the dead can get to work in our lives to change us and to give us the power to break down those sinful habits and to change those uh, ways of life that have led us astray and the addictions that enslave us and so on. Jesus gives us the power to change. Not only has he died and risen, but he's also ascended into heaven to the courtroom of God. And if you like, he's our advocate there. That's the language that the Bible uses to describe him, that he is pleading our case before the throne of heaven. And when we pray, he takes our prayers and he brings them to his father um, in his name. And therefore they're accepted. And, and therefore we have access to God when we pray. Jesus is our advocate, our shepherd, our friend. And most of all, he's our Lord. He's the one we must surrender our lives to, the one who is in control of every aspect of our lives. And that means that he's also our inheritance. Jesus says, Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. You know, all the things we worry about, all the things that keep us busy, they gradually fade, don't they? They go by. You know, youth is gone. Those young years of parenthood, they're gone very quickly, aren't they? All the things we invest in, we, we can spend those investments remarkably quickly. And yet there's one thing which we have in, if we invest our lives in it, will never disappoint. And that person is Jesus. He is the portion, the inheritance that will never be taken away from us. So I need to ask you, are you too busy to have God in your life? Or will you come like Mary to receive from Jesus everything that we need to live life here and to have eternal life. I want to say to you, Jesus will never, ever disappoint you. And Jesus is the ultimate answer to the hunger of our souls. Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you next week.